<laughs> I'm going to try at uh, this late, late hour. Uh, I see a lot of empty seats, but hopefully we'll, we'll uh, talk to the important people that are left. It's always nice to try to talk about 23 years of history in four minutes or maybe five minutes, but I'll absolutely try my best. But it's also somewhat heartwarming to see that some of the programs, many of the programs and initiatives that we uh, put in place 20, you know, 15 to 20 years ago have now, now become somewhat commonplace and, and routine. Uh, and uh, it, I never believed that it would happen, frankly, uh, going through many of the battles. Actually, Dr. Meltzer over there talked about a specialist accepting uh, some of the programs that he has in place. Well, 15 to 20 years ago, it was World War III every day. And uh, I'm only 18 years old, but I look like this because of, because of some of the battles we, we had to endure. So what I'm going to try to talk about in the next five minutes, and I'll really talk quickly, uh, is where we were, where we are today, and where we plan to go. And where we plan to go is sustainability and scalability period. So I'm going to change the order of my slides because, to make it more relevant to discussions uh, that happen today. And I've been promised that this works right now if I point in some certain direction. And I'm going to go right there because he's smiling and he's very, very, very happy. But basically, 20 years ago, a bunch of physicians got together and were very unhappy with the direction of healthcare in California and decided we want to take take the accountability for the future in our own hands. And we went and took global risk. And not only did we take global risk for Medicare on seniors, we also took all the administrative risk. So uh, we got most of the premium from a, a health insurance company at the time, uh, and then quickly decided we better figure out what to do. And things were very, very clear. And you heard a lot of it today. It was very clear that 20% of the seniors use 80% of the cost. This was 23 years ago. Uh, and it was very clear of what some of the solutions that were necessary. And just think back. Number one, uh, for those 20%, you had to deliver some component of medical, social, psychological, functional, and pharmaceutical care. So this is a lot of deja vu for me today. You had to provide care across sites. That means you had to provide care where people live, something you're hearing a lot about today as well. The third thing was, was clear today and around the country. It's clear to me as I go around the country uh, every, almost every week is that primary care physicians don't have the resources to deliver care to those 20%. They have the intelligence. They have the will. They have the hard work. They don't have the resources. And last which is still very concerning to me, is that in most parts of the country, specialists still deliver care by body part. And whoever has the worst body part takes control of the case. There's no coordinations. Hospitalists, on the average, are facilitators for the specialist and don't really, con don't really have uh, an element of control where they control the outcome of the case. So what we did? is we uh, created a new physician. You heard about a variant of that new physician day from Dr. Meltzer and, and uh, uh, Dr. Masters. And we, we created a physician 20-something years ago called an extensivist. And that was a highly trained physician who went to the hospital, didn't see 30, 30 patients as hospitalists do, but saw five to six. Job number one, take care of the patient. Job number two, do something very novel at the time. Uh, speak to the family and actually figure out what's going on. Job number three, uh, something even more novel, speak to the primary care physician every day. And for anybody who is frail, whether post-hospitalization or for any other reason through our technology systems or through referral, they could be seen at a care center, seen by a team, led by the extensivist, uh, and, uh, in, which included nurse practitioners, social workers, case managers, and uh, MAs that you've heard today uh, that work at the top of their license. Everybody's working at the top of the license and doing things that they weren't used to doing before. Uh, they would, we would also have teams in the center 
uh, that would integrate mental health. So we had psychiatrists, psychologists, nurse, uh, uh, psych NPs who would not only see patients in the center, but also see patients at nursing homes and uh, skilled nursing facilities and even at the home. We also uh, uh, incorporated nutrition, podiatry, and other key components for seniors all at the care center. We would incentivize the primary care physicians and the specialists to work with us, and it all it, it worked out over 20 years, where we had some tr we had transformational outcomes, transformational decreased costs, and uh, in in and. Uh, uh, expanded to five states with over 100,000 members in, in MA. We also, we, because we had the administrative side under our control, uh, we directed all or most of the benefits towards better clinical outcomes. So uh, most of you are, were too young to think about 20 years ago, but 20 years ago, uh, psychiatry benefits was limited benefits, high co-pays. We eliminated co-pays and made benefits uh, limitless, because we knew that integrating uh, mental health care into the clinical care would decrease, uh, would decrease costs and improve outcomes. And that's exactly what happened. We decreased psych admissions by a third. We decreased length of stay in psychiatric hospitals by a half. And we certainly impacted uh, host hospital admissions. And just think of program after program after program, whether it's diabetes, uh, Coumadin care, mental health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all integrated into these care centers, all incentivizing the primary care physicians, uh, all communicating with primary care and specialty, creating this ecosystem of outcomes and low costs. Uh, that was eventually sold to a very large insurance company in 2011. And most of us moved on, the management moved on to create Alignment Healthcare. And Alignment Healthcare is an integrated, coordinated clinically, clinical care delivery system that's technology enabled to take risk and produce these outcomes with partners, which are health plans, hospital systems, and um, physician groups. There's burning platforms out there today. If you don't know it, there is. The health plans on NMA are most, mostly are losing money and don't know how to deliver care in most cases, with all respect to health plans. Uh, the hospital systems have to make the decisions of whether to get into population health at a level that they can afford and to buy the technology for them to uh, deliver that health care and to make it work. And the physician groups simply don't have the capital. So what we are able to do and have started to do uh, in, a, in a number of venues is to bring in our extensive system, support it with capital, uh, always have the best benefits for an MA plan because of our uh, previous, previous outcomes, deliver benefits to the patients that are clinically directed deliver all the health plan services, and it's impo important to be able to know how to deliver health plan services and have health plan capabilities better than a health plan, because you want to be able to do the bid. You want to, if the health plan wants to do it, you want to be able to color that bid so it is done correctly, deliver benefits, pay all your claims. You want to pay claims yourself. Now, why do we want to pay claims? We want to pay claims, but we want all the data. Okay, we want all the data, and we'll show you why we want all the data in the next in, in the next slide. And I'll limit myself to two slides and three more minutes. Okay. Want to? We, a little late. Okay, then two more minutes. Then <laughs> we want to be able we want to be able to have all the data. We want to be able to have all the claims data. We want to have, have all the lab data. We want to have all the pharmacy data. We want to have all the EMR data. We want to have unstructured data. And like our very passionate friend who engineer back there somewhere, if she didn't leave, said, oh, there she is, right over here, <laughs> is we want to be able to integrate all that data so we can look at every patient every day that we have to decide on whether we have to intervene on that patient every day. Clinical alerts, HEDIS alerts, clinical gap alerts, RAF alerts, 
We want, and uh, frankly, know the financials on every patient every day. So I'll just show you one more slide. And I've got to be able to see it. There it is. So we take all that data uh, that I just talked about and even are starting to look into big data elements, integrated in through a variety of different algorithms where we're able to uh, create clinical alerts every day, create RAF alerts, create HEDIS alerts, create clinical GAP alerts, et cetera, and then be able to shove them out to care centers or the right people to make sure those alerts are acted upon, on a, if necessary, on a daily basis. So we're looking to do the following, and I just got, actually, I promised one slide. I'll give you one more. Okay. We're looking to do the following. Prevention earlier predictive patterns so we can act on it to prevent high cost, high cost interventions, assured execution in every patient every day, and do it over a longitudinal time frame. So you heard a lot about that in a, in a variety of different uh, ways today, but we feel that uh, uh, moving towards uh, these requirements are what's necessary. We decrease cost over 20% in the past over Medicare fee-for-service, close to 25% while producing exceptional outcomes, uh, we're looking to decrease costs towards another 20%. And that's uh, uh, what we're aiming to do. We are already in North Carolina with University of North Carolina Health System in Wake, uh, Wake County. We'll be in three, uh, three major uh, cities in Florida next year. We have a health plan in Florida, that, I mean in California, where we're in multiple cities. We take risk, uh, whether it's being a health plan or a risk-bearing entity, uh, and uh, we certainly plan to produce value as we've done before, but at, with, with more intensity this time. Thank you very much.